<clears throat> so we watched it live. The Seahawks, a humbling 24 to 10 defeat on Sunday night football. And then we had to humble ourselves again when Brendan and I watched the film. Well, you're not really humble. You're not an Eagles fan, so you don't really care. But I care. I care, damn it. Brendan Albert is here. I am Adrian FedQ. You watched the game Sunday night. What, what were your thoughts? I mean, I care about good football. And honestly, this was the best matchup that we saw. I mean, these are both Super Bowl caliber teams. Good news for the Birds. You're, in all likelihood, you're not going to have to go back to Seattle. As long as the Eagles win out, they'll either be at home or go to Minnesota at the worst case. So it's just a, it's a better pill to swallow. That's a good team, though. I mean, let, let's, let's not make it sound like, oh, my God, this is a terrible loss. It's a good team. This is a playoff team, a Super Bowl team. Losses happen. Learning experience, forget about it. Move forward now. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're going to get into the, into the game. We're going to get into some of the film and, and some of the All-22 and talk about Carson Wentz. I, I know, by God, we cannot say anything negative about Ginger Jesus. So if you don't want to hear negativity, you might want to not want to listen to this show today because Carson Wentz left 17 points on the field, and we're going to talk about it in this show. No doubt. I mean, I, I, it was kind of one of those things when our last show we did, Adrian, people were talking about how uh, I'm not worried about the fumbles we had because the Bears weren't able to capitalize it, so the fumbles didn't matter. Well, how about the fumble on the one-yard line that rolled out of the end zone that would have cost seven points to tie the game? Yeah. Our whole point when we talked about it was, and we said this, this is something you can do against the Bears. You cannot do this against good teams. And when you do this against good teams, you lose. And that's what happened. Yeah, exactly. And the first play we're going to get into, a crossing route by Nelson Aguilar that Carson Wentz overthrew. Sailed it. Would have led the Eagles to field goal range instead. Uh, they punted uh, three plays later. So first quarter, uh, about the 427 mark, I believe this play is. So we're going to get into it right now. Let, let me uh, do the whole share screen and do all that Jimbo and all that beautiful stuff. So here is our beautiful All-22 view. Brendan Albert is in the building, so he's going to break it down. So let's pause it here, Adrian. I want to yeah. show – I want to share my screen, actually. Yeah, yeah, you have a, I want to show, yeah, you have a – all right. Yeah, you have a presentation to present us. Hold on. You so there's, there's three teams in the – in the NFL, guys, that are <clears throat> very deliberate about saying, we run cover th three, and we are going to make you beat us. We're not going to overthink this. We're going to run cover three. We're going to play deeper than the deepest and make you beat us. Adrian, are you able to see my screen right now? I, I do not. Okay, no worries. So as a quick reminder, guys, cover three just means that there's three deep players. So with, with three deep, what that means is, they are playing, you know, deeper than the deepest here, and they are saying, hey, you can throw anything in front of us. How about now, Adrian? I can see it, yeah. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So let's take a peek here at these three red arrows. So the three red arrows here, we have our two defensive backs, and then we have our one safety there in Earl Thomas, the best middle field player in the NFL. Seattle has run this religiously. They simply say, we are going to run three deep, make you throw the ball in front of us, rally up and tackle because we have two of the best linebackers in the, in the NFL in the middle there. And then in case you want to try to run a deep cross, which is what the Eagles run here. Deep cross means, guys, let's take a look at these two blue routes. These two blue routes, they're just decors. All they're doing is trying to get down the field, make these defensive backs open up and run, and then Nelson here is going to run that deep over route in the yellow essentially right behind where the defensive back is going to turn their head and run. So this is what teams are going to run against cover three. This is a kryptonite. This is the weakness of cover three. The reason Seattle is so confident in saying, we don't care, we know this is our weakness, and we're still going to run this against you, is because they have one of the best defensive line rotations in the NFL. So these plays take a longer amount of time to develop and work in order for the quarterback to be able to hit the deep cross here. So that's why the Seahawks say, go ahead and try it. We'll get the sack before you're able to get it off here. So if you have the opportunity to make this play happen, you have to be able to connect on it. Otherwise, you're in serious trouble here. Yeah. All right. So I guess I'll show the play now it itself Yep. Uh, after you Let me get out of the screen. Stop. Yep. One moment here. Do, 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 do. 
There we there go. There we are. All right, so let's get into the play itself. So now, now that you saw uh, Brennan's lovely uh, graphic. So here we go. Here's the actual play. Uh, we'll, we'll do it in slow-mo. So what did you see out of Carson Wentz? What, what, what was his mistake here? Well, the first thing we're going to see is you're going to see the Seahawks essentially commit three players, all Sean Jeffrey on the top of the screen, both, the, both safeties in the corner. I mean, Earl Thomas is going to start favoring there. Right now, Carson has so much freaking time. This is a layup throw. Layup throw. And he has so much time, and he can step up into the pocket. I understand some people might say, well, maybe Nelson ran the route a little shallow. Okay. I might be able to buy that. I think that is probably a little bit fair. But the truth is, if Carson has that much clean time in the pocket, it shouldn't matter if he runs it shallow or not because – he has the time to adjust and throw a really catchable ball because if he hits this, this is probably a touchdown. What do now, you see mechanically here uh, on, on this throw? What's wrong with mechanics? Mechanically, let's take a peek here at, at Carson's left foot. And you can see here, Carson's left foot is pointing closer towards the sideline right now. And you see how Carson has to stand straight up in the air to make this throw? Standing, if, if our front foot isn't aiming at the target of where Nelson or a receiver is going to be, one of two things is going to happen. First thing is something that like Stafford and Cutler do. They throw the ball side-armed. Now, some guys can do that because they have the talent. And then the thing that Carson does here, perfect pause here, Adrian. The thing that Carson does here is he stands straight up. So he locks up. Brady does this a lot too. So what happens is this causes the ball to sail. Because now Carson is not able to drive the ball right through. He essentially has to step up, which causes his release point to be higher, which adds about two yards there on the throw. It's a small thing, guys, but this is the difference between a touchdown and incompletion here. Yeah, and, and overthrows and sailing passes, when he does go wrong, this is what happens with Carson. And sailing passes isn't what you want because if you have his safety lurking, that's an interception sometimes. Like Don McNabb, he, he was always known for throwing the ball into the ground. Well, you're not going to intercept a pass that goes into the ground. But if it sails, more likelihood that it does get picked off. But obviously, Wentz has done a tremendous job this season not turning the ball over. Fantastic. And you know what? Let's be fair. The Seahawks defense will make good quarterbacks look bad. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, and then when you have a, a coach who kind of called a scared game, I thought, um, that didn't help things either. So 9 of 13 for 45 yards in the first half for Carson Wentz. Uh, showing too much respect, I thought, for the Seahawks defense. Mm -hmm. All right, so next play we're going to get into. So we just saw Wentz airmail a throw. Now we're going to see him underthrow, basically the same route. So what is, does that get in your head then there? It, it, you overthrow guys, so now all of a sudden when you see him open again, uh, you don't want to overthrow, so you, you kind of, you know, just kind of try to loft it, and it just doesn't get there. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, you've heard the expression, sometimes the hardest throw to make is the easiest throw to make. Yeah. And literally going to be the exact same concept. It's going to be the exact same concept. It's just out of a different formation. But it's just going to be two runoffs by our top receivers and then a deep cross again. And it's the exact same situation. We see yeah. the corners are bailing. It's going to be – this is free money here. Um, now, Carson's able to complete this one, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But he puts this one in the dirt. I mean, he puts, he puts more air on this. We got another touchdown here. Instead of throwing it, he aimed it. That's exactly what right. That's what happened. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. So, we'll kind of see here in the end zone view. We'll, we'll look at his mechanics here. Anything with his mechanics you didn't like? No, I, I think, think overall this is a much better a much better job. His, his foot placement is going to be in a better position here. It's, it's just 100% like you said, Adrian. I think he just was thinking so much. I got to aim this one. I got to make sure I hit it there. That sometimes just grip it and rip it, man. Don't think about it. Yeah. I mean, you can see momentum is moving towards the receiver. It's in a much better position than the last one where his momentum was moving towards the sideline. But to be honest, these both plays should have been completed. Again, when you play a cover three team, Seattle, San Diego, Atlanta, all three of these teams say we're going to play cover three. 
all day long. And if you have the time to hit the deep cross, great, but we don't think you will. Yeah. All right. So we, we've talked about some of the, the bad of Carson and we're going to get into some of his actually some of his nice throws now. So uh, this is a play early in the third quarter uh, on completion to Alshon Jeffrey. So that was another thing about this game. Alshon Jeffrey, Zach Ertz, your two big weapons in the passing game all season long, combined for just one target in the first half. That, that's unacceptable to me. And finally, in the third quarter, this opening drive, Doug made some adjustments, and they combined for four receptions on this drive. But obviously, this is the one where Wentz fumbled at the one-yard line. So that kind of negated everything. But um, this was a good throw, though. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, to be fair, guys, even if you go back, rewatch that first clip that we showed you, that first clip you're going to see Alshon's getting triple covered. So the Hawks did a, did a good job here. But this is going to be a high-low read here on Earl Thomas. So Carson's just going to have a, a deep post and a skinny post, and he's just going to say, hey, which one does Thomas take away? Because as long as my receivers can win inside, it's just going to put Thomas in a bind. Is he going to take the deep one away or the shallow one away? And then Carson just needs to throw the opposite one. Yeah, and we'll just kind of let this one play a little bit. So we'll, we'll do this one a little slow. And you'll see here that both, both the receivers who are going to run these posts do a good job of getting across the face of their respective defensive backs, which is perfect. And now this puts Earl Thomas here in a no-win situation. Earl decides to take away the, uh, the uh, deeper of the two at first. So then he says, okay, well, then I'm going to throw the follow there to Alshon, and Earl's nowhere, nowhere near to be able to make this play. It's a perfect read by Carson, good ball. Now we got the ball on the four-yard line. Yeah, this was definitely one of his better throws of the game. I want to say better throw, not best play, though. His best plays came in the fourth quarter. Those third and 14s were absolutely ridiculous. And we're going to get – actually, we're, we're going to get this one. I'll talk about this one right now. So the first play of the fourth quarter, I don't know how the hell he got this pass off. He was falling down on the ground, literally, and, and just flipped this ball like 40 yards down the right sideline. That's God-given ability. that You can't teach it. There, I mean, honestly, guys, there's zero things to talk about with this. Like, uh, the thing I'll say is Carson does a nice job of, you know, keeping his arms, his eyes downfield. But this is just a freakish, you know, freakish ability that Carson has to be able to make plays happen. All the good quarterbacks are going to be able to make things like this. Rodgers, Russell, et cetera. I mean, he's throwing this one from his freaking hip as he's on his way down, man, and puts a ball and a strike on him. Like, think about this. Any other quarterback tries to make that throw, it's not getting past Maxwell. It's not getting over his head. Somehow that, that – I, I, I don't know how he did it. He threw that ball like 50 yards while falling down. We're going to see it right here. He's stumbling, too, as he's going. Oh, my God. Uh, so good. <laughs> I, I mean, I hate to say this. I don't think it is. But there are some plays that if you put on TV and you're like, I think the NFL is rigged and you show me that play, I'd be like, eh, okay, maybe that, maybe that play is rigged because it just defies the human logic. You know, I don't know how to explain it, man. Those things don't happen to normal humans. Well, we're going to see another inhuman play as well. So this is the, the other third down. Nelson Aguilar, by the way, huge game for him, seven receptions. For 141 yards, faced his demons in Seattle. So th this play here, where he he steps up in the pocket and he just he just flips this ball. It's a it's a huge difference of what we've seen from Carson, you know, in the last several weeks of what we saw him versus with Washington. When we watched that Washington game, he would spin out and play deeper in the pocket. Lately, he's been stepping up and just been doing a fantastic job. This is going to give you a great angle here. I felt Carson is just going to do a good job stepping up into the pocket. And this is his first read the entire way. He sees here that we're going to have a little outside rush. Does a great job at feeling that, stepping up in the pocket and just letting it rip, man. I mean, this is just 101 pocket presence. It's a great job. But what I want to do here, guys, is when Adrian's done showing this, I want you to go back and I want you to watch Torrey Smith here because Torrey Smith gets the assist on this touchdown. And most people aren't going to realize it. But Torrey Smith deserves more credit on this touchdown than deserved. So we'll see Torrey Smith here. He's going to be in the middle of that trips look. Yep. Let's watch what Torrey does. Oh, excuse me. Oh, it's that small rub. 
It's the yeah. rub route or pick route, depending on if you're an offensive or defensive guy. That's what <laughs> it gives Nelson the ability to separate. Well, the Seahawks were using the rub route all night, so absolutely, uh, we got away with one there. It's okay. Just all a right. perfect ball. Yeah, it, it, that's ridiculous. Just just a back footed flip like that. Just wow, unbelievable. We have Ginger Jesus, and you don't. That's what that is. All right, uh, now let's get into the other quarterback. You know, he played really well. Uh, so, Russell Wilson, first play we're going to look at here. Uh, do, actually, which play do you want to look at? Do, do you want to look at the third and 12? Is, is that one you want to look at? It's fine with me. Or do you – actually, let's, let's start with your graphic. Let's, let's – okay. gap control, baby, gap control. So, this is late in the third quarter here. Actually, I don't even remember what this play is, but we're going to look at it. So I thought one of the things the Eagles did well was actually staying in their gaps, at least in the second half. First half, not so much, but uh, second half, I, I thought they were a lot more disciplined. Oh, this is the intentional grounding. Okay, this was, this was a perfect example of how you play this. Yeah. You want to do your graphic or do you want to do this first? Yeah, let me, let me show you my graphic. Okay, so guys, because I think that's going to put things in a perspective for you. All right. Go ahead. Go for it. Oh. Should see this now. There it is. Yep. So when you're playing, there are two quarterbacks in the NFL that are just unbelievable in terms of pocket mobility, Russell Wilson and Aaron Rodgers. Um, when you're playing these guys – Every gap has to be accounted for. Even if he rolls right, you still have to be responsible for your gap or these guys are able to make it happen. So this gives you an idea here of where everyone's gap is responsible for. Now, if, if you as an Eagles fan think it's comical to watch Zach Ertz block, I want you to watch Jimmy Graham on this play because Jimmy <laughs> Graham has zero interest at trying to block Chris Long here. Just doesn't want to do it. And because of that, that's what's going to set this whole thing up. Now, what's going to ultimately doom this play is going to be here, our big middle, middle linebacker right in the middle, because he, he's going to be able to come through the A-gap. That eventually is going to take away Russell's cutback angle, and that eventually is what allows Derek Barnett to get the hit on the quarterback. So it's really a domino effect, but everyone has to be doing their job when you play these type of quarterbacks who are able to just make plays happen that, frankly, they shouldn't. Yeah, and now we're going to look at the play. And we're going to look at Jimmy Graham's awful block. He's never liked blocking, that's for sure. I, I bet yeah. you if, if Vontez Perfect uh, came around the edge, uh, he wouldn't block him either. That's, that's what Zach Ertz got all that heat for last year, if you remember. All right, so we're going to look at this play. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Actually, well, I'll, I'll kind of let this go a little fast, and then, uh, and then we'll, the, the other angle will be better to do slow-mo, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is this is exactly how you play him. Don't let him escape the pocket, and you sandwich him. That's yep, it. exactly. And this will and this will give you a really good angle here of yeah. exactly Chris Long's ability to take a, a very poor blocking tight end and expose him. Let's see him lay. Oh, he's not even trying. <laughs> no, that's just too easy. It's just too easy. And then what we see from, from our middle backer here, he sees an open gap but between that guard and center, and he takes off right away like he's supposed to. And then Russell sees that, so he thinks, well, the only option I have is I can't run right, I can't run straight, let me see if I can spin left. And then Derek Barnett's right there in his chops. Yeah. So we saw that play, and, and another play just – just to show you how great Russell Wilson is, this was a third and 12, and the Eagles played this about as well as you could play it. A complete team effort to stop Russell Wilson shy of this first down. Uh, so this was the 530 mark. Um, I don't know if this is the first quarter or the second quarter. I didn't write the time now. I'm about to find it. This is not it. When did it happen? Second quarter? Where? Looks like you have a – yeah. I have a uh, first quarter, third and 12. Well, yeah, and here it is right here. This is – Eagles did a beautiful job here. I mean, I said this to, to one of my other buddies who actually had the opportunity to go to the game as an Eagles fan. 
I don't think there's another quarterback in the NFL, including Brady or Roethlisberger, maybe only Rodgers, that if he played on a bad offensive line as Seattle would be able to win games. Mm -hmm. And I mean that I could argue he's the most valuable player to the Seahawks. Just a great job here of reading the pressure and being able to slide back and then being able to slide up. And this is what I talked about with, you know, having every gap responsible. If you're not gap responsible with guys like Russell or Rodgers, they're able to make things happen that really they shouldn't be able to. And the other thing about this play, if you notice, the Eagles had their four best pass rushers on the field at the same time. You had Brandon Graham lined up as a defensive tackle here. And this is something they, they did a couple times against Seattle where they lined him up uh, inside. BG actually had a sack later on in the game. Um, but this was a situation where he gets upfield, he forces uh, Wilson to step up. Actually, well, he didn't step up. He, he stepped out first. And then, and then he tries to climb forward and make the first down, and Corey Graham is there for the tackle. I mean, it's, it's just so freaking hard when you play these type of guys. Honestly, these are the quarterbacks that defensive coaches really hate to play against. Yeah, obviously, he ain't playing against your, your Brady's of the world, but it's the guys like Rodgers that you're, they're able to say, hey, we, we, we have the play covered. And then Rodgers is able to make two defensive line to miss and buy himself an extra second and a half, and all of a sudden, it's a 70-yard touchdown. It's the same thing for us. And that was a textbook tackle by Graham uh, through the thigh, uh, so you, you, you don't miss the tackle there. So good tackle attempt um, by Corey Graham. All right, uh, next play. Do we have any more? Uh, oh, actually, I, I did list the, the one uh, about Brandon Graham. Um, uh, we don't need to talk about that. We'll, we'll end on – you want to end on Ajayi? Should we talk about that one? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so this was this – was, a uh, play where Ajayi picked up 11 yards, had showcased nice vision, uh, had a pair of nice cuts on this run. Um, this is second quarter, 13-20. So I, I, did, I did like that they used him more. Uh, the, he got nine carries on Sunday. Uh, so they utilized him more. Nine carries for 35 yards, but I, I, I like the way that he ran. He ran hard. He ran angry, and he was finishing runs. So we're going to yeah, see absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we'll see a better view uh, in the end zone view here and, uh, and I'll let you take it over. And I think you know if Seattle would have known that it only cost them a fourth round pick to get Jay Ajayi, they probably would have done it, you know, mm -hmm. because this is the type of offense that they want in a running back here. So what I want you guys to look at is this play is really on fault of Brooks. <clears throat> now this is going to be a zone block to our left. Now, when you zone block, what you have to do is you have to, if you're going to your left, you have to get your hand on the offensive line, a defensive lineman to your right to delay him long enough to get the help of your right side player, so in Brooks's case, right tackle here in Lane Johnson, to be able to come over. Now, when Adrian replays this, guys, from our end zone view, what you're going to see the difference between Kelsey and Brooks is huge. Notice here that when Kelsey, when this play is snapped, Kelsey's going to do a jo good job of getting his right hand on that nose tackle and delaying him long enough for Brooks to come over. But look, Brooks does Lane Johnson zero help. He doesn't slow this defensive lineman down. It's impossible for Lane Johnson to get a guy who's already outshaded him. But Ajayi is quick enough and has good agility to make that hop step, and then he reads the ball outside, and now he can bounce it. This play should have been a loss of two. But because of Ajayi's agility and because of his vision, he's able to make this positive play. This play is just on a simple thing of Brooks. You've got to get your hand on there, man. Help that right tackle out. Give him an extra split second for him to get over and be able to block that defensive lineman. Yeah, and, and look at the way Ajayi finished that run as well, putting his shoulder down, keeping those legs churning, and getting an extra two to three yards. Yep, absolutely. That's what you want here. Same thing. It's the same thing him and Blunt. You expect those guys to get extra yards, but like we talked about in the Bears tape, you don't want to sacrifice ball security in those situations either, and that's what happened in the Bears game. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, we went the full hour today because we, we did the bowl preview, so we did that. So that's all for you guys, and now we did this. Uh, any, anything else you want to get into? Only thing I want to add, guys, if you're, if you're not watching, just keep an eye on all the forest fires going on outside of L.A., just absolutely horrific things that are going on. I'm, I'm wearing my California hoodie just to show my little love and appreciation mm -hmm. for the guys in California safe. Um, Rams actually had to cancel their practice today. Air quality is that bad. Eagles yeah. were still able to 
practice, but at a time like this, it's more than football. Just keep your prayers for the people of Los Angeles. They're going to lose a lot. It also uh, pairs up to Ryan Shazier as well. Uh, scary play on Monday night. Um, they said the report was the next 24 to 48 hours going to be very critical. I haven't looked at anything today so far, so uh, I'll make sure to check that after the show. But, um, yeah, that, that, I, I didn't like seeing his, his legs just look like jello there. That, that was scary. Uh, hopefully he's okay. It's the, it's the worst feeling as, as a coach going out there and, and think your first thought is, I wonder where his parents are sitting. And that's the most terrifying feeling to have because a lot of times you as a coach are the one who delivers whatever message ha- happens. So hope everything's okay with Ryan. It's more than football, you know, and best of luck to him and his family moving forward. Yeah. All right. So with that said, that's, that's it for this show. That's Brennan Albert. I am Adrian Fedku. We'll be back next week, hopefully uh, recapping an Eagles victory. So we're out. Peace. Appreciate it, guys.